Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel. We come in, we find ourselves in the middle of a series. So for those of you that are watching this video for the review portion, we're going to run that first a little bit. And then I'd love to have you join us for the rest of the episode. If you like what you see, go back and watch the whole series. Um, it's been a lot of fun so far. We've been playing this since the game came out. Uh, I am slow at playing it because I do a bunch of other stuff in real life and in game life. So uh, I am slowly working my way through SnowRunner. Um, almost got the first four maps of like 10 unlocked, <laughs> but it's taking a long time. So tonight we're going to take a look at the Chevrolet Apache. And this is a, I believe, pretty fictional truck um, that is based on a real truck, uh, but it's a six-wheel drive off-road monster. I'll tell you what, I've been playing around with this truck a bit, and it is really quite an off-road beast. Um, not, once again, super realistic, but it brings it, uh, us up to closer to the uh, having a scout that is at Russian level um, ability, like the Yar um, with the six-wheel drive. Not quite there yet but close um we're gonna go through the customization first and then we'll take this thing for a ride and it'll be uh, i'm gonna take you guys over to um lake island and we're gonna do a couple rescue missions um with with this uh as our scout truck to uh, rescue some of these smaller trucks um so we have several engines available i'm running the hetv6 because it seemed like the best power to weight to fuel uh, burning the eight cylinder takes too much gas and doesn't give us much more power. As you can see here, it's, uh, eh, it just, it's, it takes us like down on durability and down on power consumption. So we're better off with this. Uh, the power to rate's not as uh, power to weight's not as good on the V six, but, uh, it's kind of a good balancing point. Uh, I'm using the snow runner gearbox. We also have a freeway gearbox. We can run, um, it doesn't, I don't have a raised suspension for this yet. I don't know if there is or not, but it doesn't really need it. It's pretty high already. Um, it comes with these off-road tires that we are using right now, uh, and I'm just going to leave these on. These are really good tires. I've played around in the mud. Um, they don't get stuck, but we also have a choice of road tires. We have uh, or all-terrain, um, kind of a mud-style all-terrain, like the uh, Paystar gets, uh, and then we have some more road-looking all-terrain tires these will be good but you'll get better fuel mileage and the handling better on pavement uh, but we're going to keep these on and then obviously if you have if you want to go with the swampers like the mud tires they, well, they do have them this will help the truck do better in mud but the truck is so mushy with these i don't i don't really like it so i kind of go with this one where these are it's kind of you do a lot more off-roading anyway so and then last but not least we have the chain tires for the snow um, winches are the same as all the scouts. Uh, I went with the autonomous scout winch in case I flip over. Uh, this does have a rear trunk supply and also a roof rack. You don't have to have the roof rack on the truck though. After I've, I've gotten used to having the roof rack on. And so it kind of, I don't know. I can't take it off. Hold on. What's going on here? I guess it's just stuck on there forever. Okay. Uninstall. There we go. That's what it looks like without the roof rack. Um, it feels naked. I know, yes, I'm aware the roof rack does make everything run slower. It makes the truck run slower. It can also make it a bit top heavy. I'm yet to flip this truck over. I was, it's so slow that you can't really do donuts anyway. So I'm trying to get it to flip, but it won't flip. I couldn't get it to flip over. Um, you have two, two snorkels available. I pick with the tall one. Um, now we'll put the default bumper on it's, it's got a regular stock bumper and it does, when you put it on, it actually turns the color of the, the truck. There you go. So it's not that way, but I've gone with the double pipe. Same with the front. Um, why do I have fog lights? I don't need those cause I've got the roof rack has lights on it. Um, this is the default bumper. Uh, but we've gone with the uh, double pipe. The Hunter bumper is also pretty cool. I like the way it's got these ropes tied to the roof rack or to the roof. That's kind of neat. But I did. I stuck with the. Uh, no, this one. There we go. Because I, th th I like the double pipe in the back. So uh, rims. There's one set of rims. That's it. We have an American paint job plus all the regular colors. I happen to like. The, I don't really like blue and pink or blue and purple, so I went with the, or white and purple, I mean. 
So I went with, uh, you can do with orange. That's not bad. I, I kind of like the way that looks. But I really like the way this this blue is my favorite. I, this is what my RC truck colors are, actually. It's white and kind of like a light baby blue. Uh, and then they've added some new things in here. You can now customize the dashboard. I, I'm not sure when this came in. I just noticed this when I was here this time. I haven't played the game in the last couple of weeks because I've been super busy with work. Some of these are still locked, but I don't really use them. You can have a heart, different cards for the thing. But I did put the shut up and take my winch sticker on my dashboard. <laughs> so that's the truck as I have it configured. Once again, we got stock wheels. Um, this truck, if you are just getting into the game and you wanted to have a really buff scout without... Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change it back to morning. Oh, it is morning still. Okay. Um, you could buy this DLC and have this truck right away. I would say the con is probably a little bit better, but this truck is still quite amazing. And it's an American truck, so if you're in America, you wouldn't really see a con anyway. So this would be a fun way to start. So we're going to run this over to Island Lake, uh, but do a little testing on the way. Uh, one thing that I did notice that's weird about this truck, well, there's two issues. First of all, when you're not in all-wheel drive, oddly enough, it's a front-wheel drive truck. Look at this. See, the back wheels are not turning at all, and the front wheel drive is spinning. It is diff locked, but it's only the front that's diff locked. So you are going to have to use, unfortunately, four wheel drive quite a bit. I was hoping that it would be double rear wheel diff locked, kind of like the GMC 9500 and some of the other semi trucks that are out there. But for some really weird reason, they went with a front-wheel drive system on this truck until it's all-wheel drive. Kind of like a modern, I don't know, like a CRV or something like that. So I don't know why they did that, but that's that's how they did it. So that's what we got. So you will have to use all-wheel drive. I don't want to say frequently, but you're going to have to use it for sure. Um, because even here, you can see when it's off-road a little bit, it's hard to move. And even with the mud tires, it still spins the wheels. So... Once again, I know the roof rack slows the truck down. It also weighs it down. But it's still pretty cool. Inside the truck, we have our Chevrolet vintage dashboard, which I like. It's pretty good looking. Simple truck from a simpler time. Since we're still going downhill, I don't have to have the all-wheel drive on. It's got a funny 50s truck horn. Oops. Gas and farm. We're going towards the farm. Once we get back on the flat land, I recommend running it in uh, four-wheel drive. Once again, you're going to burn gas pretty fast. It's not a huge deal because we have a lot of gas up on top. But another thing that I wanted to point out, this is the second quirk of the truck. Not only is it front-wheel drive, this truck cannot pull a trailer at all. You could winch a trailer to it, but you can't, unlike the Lodestar where I can pull around a fuel trailer or some of the other trucks, uh, this truck does not allow you to pull a trailer, so that kind of sucks. A little disappointing you can see here we're in the deep muck and this truck is not struggling at all we're in low high but even in just low it's fine uh, mud does not seem to phase this truck so that is one of the things that i wanted to show you because i think that it's important to know that we are you know very capable in the mud and that is what we're looking for in this kind of truck um, you won't be getting stuck you can also use it to rescue smaller trucks Maybe even some larger trucks, uh, though I don't... Like the really big trucks like the Pacific P12 and stuff like that we're going to have a hard time with, but... Anything up to a Kodiak is probably pretty easily rescued with this truck. Plus you have a lot of repair points that you're carrying so you can fix them up. The downside, if you're on Lake Island, you'll be empty once you're done because this really will suck up all the um, repair points. 
but it's nice that it carries fuel too so you can put a bit of fuel in whatever truck you're repairing if you have some left over the downside once again you can't bring a trailer with you so you better make sure that you have a second truck somewhere nearby that you can be supplied with that kind of sucks but there you go Here we go. Let's see if we can get up the hill without engaging all-wheel drive. I don't think we're going to be able to do this. Maybe. Eh, it's doing it. It's not pretty. But you click the four-wheel drive on and voila. We might take more gas, but we get it done fast. So really, this truck does rely on the four-wheel drive system. And it burns double the gas when it's in four-wheel drive. <laughs> but you also get twice the speed out of it, so I don't know. Here, once again, we have a pretty heavy mud test. But the big test is to our left. Uh, and what I wanted to show you is that this... You, know, you guys remember early in the game, you have to rescue some trucks out of a farm field. And it's like the worst possible place to be. But I just wanted to go on there with this truck and show you that there's nothing to be afraid of with this truck. It just works its way through the muck. And even though it's mucky, we don't get stopped. Though I could see getting into the deeper stuff and getting stuck, but this is not bad. And this is about as bad as the mud gets in this game, so. We'll run over to a field that has some water on it, too. Let's see if we can get, we probably will get stuck. If you guys remember in the last episode, I got my uh, scout. It was either the last episode or the episode before that. I got my scout really stuck. Um, and so I think in this case you probably won't ever see that happen with this truck just because of the amount of wheels it has but you might and once again we're not even using the mud tires there are there is a one step up tire if you want to if you're gonna be doing a lot of this kind of stuff in this truck the downside is look how fast we're burning through gas it's like but it's kind of a trade-off you can see there, I was driving around there before testing it. My tracks are still there in the mud. So, is this truck worth the $399? So, for those of you that are watching the review and kind of seeing me put it through its paces, I don't know. I, I think so. I was a little ticked off, to be honest with you. I, uh, I paid you know, 60, 70 bucks for the season pass. And the fact that I now have to buy a truck within the first three months of the game being out, even though I bought the season pass, I'm a little, I'm a little bit not happy about that. Now I'll get it back through my channel. I'm not, you know, sweating it because it's like, you know, I know I'll make the money back. It's only $4, but for some, you know, if I was a regular buyer and I, I was somebody that paid for the uh, season pass and, and, um, you know, didn't get money from YouTube for having advertising and people watch this video, which, like I said, this video will pay for itself. When, when, I, when my viewers, and there's about a thousand of you that will watch this video um, or more, you know, this that'll give me three or four dollars to pay back this truck. So I'm not worried about getting the money back on this truck. But I think the frustrating thing with it is that people are, are going to be, you know, not having that kind of situation and they will have paid good money for the season pass and then they're going well what the heck like i paid the season pass so i could get all the the uh the goods without having to you know buy more stuff and unfortunately we are in a situation where they've released this truck and you still have to pay for the truck even though you bought the season pass so i don't i don't know what their thoughts were behind that maybe that was the plan the whole time but i'm a little bit um disappointed because that was a lot of money and it's you know here we are having to pay like i said i've definitely gotten my money's worth out of the game i haven't even finished it some of you guys you know whipped through it and finished it in a week i don't have that kind of time but you know i've definitely gotten my money's worth out of the game but i'm still you know a little frustrated that it's like wow you have to pay more anyway that's my one beef with this um dlc is it worth it um but i think yeah if you're into the trucks and you like to have new equipment and honestly you 
you know, part of the fun of this game is to have the new trucks. Like every time you get a new truck, it's like, ooh, and you use it for a while and, you know, put it into your, your maps and play with it. And, uh, you know, to, that's what this game is about. So, yes, it is worth it. And it, once again, it's only $4. It's not like they're asking, you know, 15 or 20 bucks. I mean, let's face it, a new airplane in Flight Sim has more detail, but is also 30, 30 bucks, $29.99. So for four ninety nine, you can have a cool truck. It's not as detailed as the airplane is, but still, it's you know, it's pretty highly detailed with a lot of options. And uh, so, I would say, even though I, I'm upset about it, the answer is yes, it's still worth it. But I really wish that it's a little bit deceptive to say, hey, you're getting the season pass. That means you know, usually when you buy a season pass, that means you get everything for the season. You should have a year's worth of, of game or more depending on what the developer promises with that season pass uh, but and not have to pay for any additional DLCs but whatever they got to make money too and stay in business so I, I get what they're doing but a little frustrating a little bit frustrated with that so anyway all right so we're gonna go ahead and uh, continue on if you've watched this review hopefully you guys enjoyed it you don't have to stick around for the rest of the episode where I actually use the truck I would love if you did but uh, I appreciate you guys coming on and watching the video anyway to see what the truck looks like and if it's worth it and what my opinion is on it. And uh, so uh, if you're going to leave, be sure to subscribe. Thumbs up always help. And uh, we'll see you next time. But uh, if you're not going to leave, well, we're going to head over to Lake Island. And uh, you can see here already we've used half a tank of fuel almost. And so this one, another issue that we're going to have with this truck, and not surprisingly, it, it does burn quite a lot of gas. So uh, you, you're going to have to use those tanks on top to refill it, and you're going to have to keep an eye on it because you will find that you're going to go burn through gas pretty quickly. I'd say most of the scouts at this point will have used a quarter tank. But once again, I'm also having to run it four-wheel drive. So if you can run it in diff lock, without the diff lock, it's great. But I don't know why they chose to do that rear-wheel drive thing. All right, let's put it down here. And once again, that roof rack will make it heavy, so it's going to slow it down a bit. Which will mean that we'll also sink down a bit, which we have, obviously. We've sunk into the muck. on the road it should be uh, should keep us up a little bit uh oh So I'm going to work my way to Island Lake, guys, and uh, I will see you once I get a little bit closer or near there. Those are pretty much just driving at this point. See you in a minute. So we've reached kind of the, sw the really swampy portion of the map, and I this is about the worst that you're going to get into with this truck aside from drowning it. So uh, right here you can see that we're just fine. It's a slow process to get through, but we're making it. And that is, you know, especially for somebody that's... Um, um, buying this truck early on in the game um, I don't want to say it's a pay to win truck but it will help you get through the game a little bit easier so if you're just starting and you want a scout that's more able than the scouts that they give you here's a good way to do it and you know it, everybody plays the game their own way so um, if you want to just grab a truck that's going to work well this one will do that will fit that bill because you start with these tires. And I mean, this is, once again, probably the worst muck that you're going to run into in the game, aside from like purposefully drowning your truck. Um, they don't get much worse than this. And the truck is not getting stuck. It is slowing down quite a bit. The downside, once again, though, look at that fuel. We have burned through 
almost all of our fuel making the trip down here. I think with every other scout that I brought down here, we still had about a half a tank of gas left when we arrived. So this is just sucking the fuel down. Um, you know, at, at five or six, it's not bad. It's just five or six liters a minute. It, but it is just, you know, sucking it down. Putting it back down to, to low gear because it's so deep here. And that'll help us, uh, save the gas too, running it at low, low, low. And then here we should be able to jump it back up. Nope, still too much, still too mucky. I'm pull up to the side here. And now we're going to refill. Not bad. And we still have more fuel in the roof. So you can fuel it up quite a bit. That's the nice thing is that it does carry a lot of, a lot of fuel. So we'll be able to keep the truck fueled for at least the same distance that the other scouts go. But you're just using more fuel. Now, thankfully, we don't have to pay for fuel in the game. So that kind of still gives us an incentive to, to go ahead and use the truck because we carry enough fuel that we can keep it running for a while. I don't know. Let's see how much we have on the roof rack. Um, refuel. Let's see what the roof roof rack. 120. Oh, we've got plenty of gas. Okay, so there's 120 up top and another 80 at the bottom. So that's plenty of gas for us to, to use this truck easily. We'll just have to make sure we refill all those tanks when we get to our fuel carrier, which is just around the corner here. So, not bad. So, yes. Um, I do like this truck. And I think it's going to be a benefit. for, especially, Like I said, especially for people that are just buying it and starting the game. Um, this will be a good truck to start with. Because, obviously, I don't want to say it's overpowered, but it's definitely... But you paid for it. So, you should be able to feel free to use it and not feel bad about it. If I was playing a hardcore game, I don't know that I would introduce this truck until later on. But... Let's fill her up and go ahead and start rescuing some trucks. The first thing we have, let's take a look here. We've got our Lodestar. We've got, what do we got? The Jerry's over there. The Oshkosh. I know there was a truck mission up here somewhere. There's our twin steer. I could have swore I saw. Oh, the Huntsman. Here we go. There's a Huntsman in a car. And that, yeah, his car is located here. So let's go ahead and grab that truck and we'll rescue it. Um, best way to go is going to be to the left through the sawmill and then up. We could also probably do Signal in the Mountains. Uh, episode wise, we'll probably finish this episode with um, the Huntsman rescue. But we'll see how we're doing time wise. So let's go ahead and refuel here, and uh, we're going to use the semi-trailer to fill up the Apache and to replenish our tanks. There we go. And then we're going to go this way. high gear here. We should be able to get away with all-wheel drive off here because of the the dry terrain. And then here we're going to switch back on again because we get into muck. And we are heading to the lumber mill, so that's perfect. And we should have plenty of gas spots to access gasoline, too, if we start to run out. But I think we'll be able to do both of these missions without a problem. 
How's everybody out there tonight doing? I hope you guys are doing well. I've been having a lot of fun making videos lately. Uh, busy with work, which is great. Uh, I think kind of went over this on some of my other videos. If you don't see a ton of videos for me every day, it's because, like, I'm trying to get one video out a day right now. Now, once the season's over and my work slows down, I'll be doing more. But right now, it's really busy. So if I can get one video a day out, I'm happy. This one will go out. We'll actually have three videos today because I also had a, a flight sim video that I did a review on. Uh, for a airport make sure you check out the flight sim series uh, we have a lot of fun there too flying around northeastern ohio and other points on the map do we need to refuel sure why not i'll take three gallons you can see here when it comes up next to the kodiak just what a big truck this is this is like the pre-kodiak kodiak Now, I want to see Signal in the Mountains is up and to the right. Okay, so we're going to turn left at the next street. And we'll run a little bit into the night, but once it gets too dark, we'll stop. Sun's going down. Beautiful sunset. Whoa. And we're just cruising along here. So we have now like five scout trucks on this map, I think. No, we have just this one in the... Uh, and our... Uh, oops. Lodestar. <laughs> Lodestar. Up here on the right will be the signal, signals in the mist, signal in the dark, whatever they call it. Wow. Oh, lovely. I didn't even do that. That's not my fault. So we're going to take that mission too because we're going to... Actually, where is that? that? They want us to go in the mountains. I know that. Signal in the mountains. Uh, it's, I think that they're, they want to check this tower here, so let's get that Huntsman truck saved, and then we'll come back and do that. Well, that might actually be closer. Let me think about this for a sec. Let's see. Hold on one second. All right. Back and at it. Now I'm wondering to I'm curious to see how these side lights do. Uh, this 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 roof rack has like side work lights on it, and they look pretty cool. I'm wondering if they actually will do anything at night. And there's the Huntsman's car. We should be able to pull that out, no problem. Now, technically, you don't have to fix that vehicle. Um, but I usually try to fix them if I can. Doesn't look like the... Oh, the lights are casting light, so we'll see. I don't know. It might help a little bit, but probably not. So let's get that car out. And let's take a look at the two missions that we have here. Um, heard about Jim, the local farmer? No. He went on hunting last week and managed to get his car stuck real good in the swamp. Ain't no way we're getting that thing out on our own. Maybe you could give it a try. Okay. Well, we will. Yeah, 
yeah, no worries here. And what is the condition of his truck? It's in good shape. Uh, what is his fuel conditions? Zero. So we'll give him a little bit of gas. That should be enough. I've seen this before. It's called um, it's called uh, a Apache Envy. A, a scout owner will think that his truck is as good as any Apache and just drive it into the swamp. We try to prevent it from happening, but you know, guys, just you know, they don't think about that. So we're gonna put. Let's see. <laughs> we need to go up there, and we also need to go over here. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pull. We're gonna go left. We're going to take care of that signal in the mountain uh, mission while going through here. Pull this little truck up. Well, wow, that thing just wants to go in the muck. Jeepers, criminy, come out. Pull him along backwards. Does it really matter? Probably not. Bad news is this tree just got in my way, but I broke it, so we're good. And once again, Arthur making it look harder than it really needs to be. Uh, the lights on the back are definitely working. That's pretty cool. So let's see it lighting up the truck there. That's really neat. So we kind of make it. Ah, what the heck was that? We kind of make it daylight all around us. We brought our own sunshine with us. All right, so this is working out pretty good. Like I said, I don't, I don't know if I would. You might be able to rescue a Kodiak-sized truck with this truck, but this one did have. It was a bit of a pull pulling that little scout out. So I don't know. We'll, we will try it at some point when we run into a. Hey, pull this truck out mission. We'll, you will use this truck to kind of see if we can't undo the other truck and pull it out. But I don't know. It's Unless that other truck is working pretty well, this might get stuck. But I'd be interested to see if you could use this. Uh, if you bought this as a DLC before you ever started the game and then used it to, like, pull out a lot of the trucks that you needed to rescue on the first map, I think, like, the trailers you wouldn't be able to do because those are just ha really heavy. But some of the trucks and the smaller trucks, you can earn experience pretty quick doing that. Plus, this truck comes with the off-road tires to start with, so that does help a lot early on in the game. All right, is there fuel nearby? Yes. Okay, good. Is it this road right there? No, it's the next road. Okay. We're going to do some fueling up. And once again, we have plenty of fuel, but I like to make sure that we have plenty, plenty, plenty of fuel. Many much fuel. that's what we need. That's what makes Arthur happy. Because I'm a control freak. And as my wife will readily tell you, Arthur, you're a control freak. Yes, dear. I know. Now hand me that remote. Alright, so here's where the fuel is. So we're going to let go of the winch. Head back into the woods here and yank that thing out. Fill everybody up and we'll leave the trailer out where it's accessible. Once again, I feel like this truck is pretty stable, even with the roof rack. You you could flip it, but also it has the autonomous mission. 
the uh, autonomous winch, which helps. So see that we're double dipping. We're going to get a review and two episodes done all in one handy dandy episode for your viewing pleasure. That's not what I wanted to do. Okay. And this thing yanks it along just fine. I really wish this had a trailer hitch. I don't know why they didn't include that, but maybe just the way the truck is, it's really meant for off-roading and they don't really give a hoot about trailer hitches if you're that serious of an off-roader. Let me pull this thing over here. Let's go back and get our little friend. And I think that's the road that we take, is it? No, it's not at all. It could be. Let me look at this. Oh, what are we doing? No. I want to go straight there. So we're going to refuel the scout, and then we're going to stop for the night. Oh, look, he just powered off. And then I'm going to leave the scout down here. Um, and we're going to head up into the mountains and get that mission done. Because that's going to go this way? No, it's not. Oh, okay. Anyway, let's uh, fuel these guys up. Again. Really? No. Okay. How about now? Oh, I see what I did. Oh. You don't have to tell me what I did because I already know what I did wrong. <sighs> I'm an idiot. Uh, okay, what am I doing now? Uh, refuel. Nope. Yep. Okay. And we're going to attach the winch. And back up. Oh, I had a little fun the other day. I should tell you this story. I was, uh, Violet, my daughter, got her tonsils out uh, and her adenoids out yesterday. And I've, I've, been, I've, I've had the car, the car that I'm driving now for about a year. And uh, I've been noticing that, you know, it has, this, it has some issue with weird issues with the brakes. But they work, but there's just, just some weird stuff going on. So I got to the parking garage yesterday and uh, went up and visited and came back down getting ready to head home. And uh, started going to leave the garage and press the brakes, and they went all the way down to the floor. I'm like, huh. So I tried it again, and sure enough, they were not working at all. So I then, uh, I went, um, I used the emergency brake, and that worked. I'm like, okay. So I got out, went back to where I parked, and, and there was fluid all over. So my brake lines let go. And my car had no brake lines. <sighs> so I had to call my son, Mark, and he met me at the parking garage. And we he went behind me because, of course, my brakes, I'm using my parking brake to, par to brake so the lights aren't really, like, totally functioning. Though I was pressing the brake so he could see I was stopping. But still, you know, it's like, just in case, I want somebody there because if, some, if all heck breaks loose and I can't stop for some reason um, and besides that I needed to drive slow so we both were driving real slow thankfully there was a repair shop that was less than a mile 
away from where we were. And they seemed reputable. They had good ratings. So I was like, okay. So I, I called them and said, you guys open? And they're like, yep. I said, I got my brakes just dumped fluid all over the ground. And I'm going to need to get the lines repaired. Can you do that? And he's like, yep. He's like, bring it on in. So I brought it in and they gave me an estimate and they went ahead and they're doing the work now. But I was like, oh my gosh, like, I can't believe this just happened. And thankfully my son Mark lived nearby and was able to come get me and, and help me, you know, pick me up once I dropped the car off and uh, escort me to the, the shop. But it was, it's $600. I'm just like, oh, the entire brake line for, uh, uh, from the front to the back of the car needed to be replaced. So it wasn't like a little puncture. He's like, no. He's like, these lines are totally rusted out. And I know the guy wasn't lying because my other mechanic, the one, the guy that I normally go to, had also told me, you know, about six months ago. He's like, look, the, they're working now, but they are going to go at some point. Like, these are pretty rusty. So he's like, just you, just be ready that you're going to have to replace these brake lines. So well, there you have it. I did. <laughs> and I did. I replaced them. So. You can see here as we travel through the woods, one of the things I like about this truck over the Russian off-roaders is that it's um, it's pretty narrow. Now, that will make it easier for it to tip, but it does make it also easier on those little narrow uh, climbing roads, which is really what this truck is for, uh, to get up there without tipping over. And that's, you know, once again, what this truck is really designed for is that kind of narrow mountain road climbing. And as you can see, we do it quite deftly. So here is the mission finish. And I think it turns into a second set of missions, if I remember right. But I'll just keep it in low high. I was doing better in low high than I was in auto. Cool. So we're going to go to bed after we do this. And we'll wake up in the morning and continue on to deliver the Huntsman his truck. And that brings up a new task on Island Lake, which, where is that? Flaming barrels, that's not it. Um, fallen antennas, maybe? Fallen antenna. The link. Okay, yes, that's it. Okay, so let's see, is there another mission point? Nope, go up here, please. Yep, there we go. Okay, so now we, we have we have missions to fix the fallen tower. And so we're going to spend the night here in the woods. Shut the truck off. And I'll be right back. All right, the sun has risen. We are going to run back down the mountain here with our little Chevy truck. pick up the scout and drag him back to his owner. Let's run in the cab for a minute or two and see how we do. Going downhill, we shouldn't need... i got to find where I'm exiting out, though. That is going to be past the next big rock and to the right. That's going to help there. <coughs> Pardon me. I think this is the route right here. Yep, there it is. So I was impressed with the way that this truck lit up the road. That was kind of neat. Definitely helpful in the... In the uh, in the uh, dark wilds of northern Michigan. I got to feed Gromit in a minute here. Once we're done with this mission, I do have to go. My dog is ready for his dinner. Oh, ah, well, that was the first damage I've done this whole time we've been driving it. Hang on. 
Uh, all right, so there we go. That was fun driving in the cab for a little bit, but this game definitely is easier from outside the cab. Oops, that is a really steep corner. I don't remember that being that hard to get around. Trying not to tip over here. Hold on one second here, folks. Oh, don't tip. <laughs> uh, that wasn't too bad. So I'm interested to see how this truck will do in Alaska. I think it'll be fine. Get those snow tires on there. The chains will be just hunky dory. Man, did we use up? Eh, well, I guess you know what though. We went pretty far, you know, and used up a decent amount of fuel. But we also got a lot of distance out of that fuel. So let's go ahead and grab this. And we're going to attach the winch. And let's go the other way. Oh, what the frick? <laughs> yeah, I know. There's a quick winch button, but I never get it right. All right, so let's go forward. How does that sound? And we're going to deliver our scout to hit the owner. He'll be happy as pie to have his little truck back with no damage and no uh, and a partly full tank of gas. He left it empty, so. The question is, how did he get it into the muck when it was empty? Hmm, that's a maybe siphon the gas off. It's a real question to ask. How did you manage to get the truck stuck when you didn't even have any fuel. Something is... Oh, really? Son of a biscuit. Well, we've done four damage to our truck. <laughs> and most of it happened in the last couple minutes of driving. Son of a biscuit. Uh, I really like this truck, though. I feel like it is definitely worth it and has been a lot of fun to use. Um, does exactly what I wanted it to do. Like I said, it's going to be a rescue scout type truck. Um, you may not be pulling out big trucks with this, but it could probably pull out a pretty decent sized. I think the Kodiak would be an example of the kind of truck that you could pull out with this. And I wouldn't necessarily try to rescue stuck trailers with this. Uh, one, it doesn't have a hitch. And two, it's just it's not heavy enough. It's it's a big truck, but it's not that big. Let's see. Did I miss the road number coming up on it? Okay. And once again, for those of you that buy it early on in game, um, they'll have to purchase it. And I don't remember. Do you guys remember what the price was on this thing? I don't think it was cheap. We'll take a look at that before we leave. Uh, we'll hop back into the garage and see what the cost was of the truck. But um, if you buy it early on in game, you know, it's going to be something that uh, you'll be able to have a pretty upgraded truck right away. Uh, even if you have a lot of stuff locked, the tires will be there and the all wheel drive and diff lock will be there. And so that will, you know, definitely help you uh, get some of the early missions done scouting missions and that kind of stuff so you can earn experience to get the other trucks upgraded gosh we really need fuel okay we'll deliver that and the fuel is right here so i'll come back and get that probably off camera but there is a fuel station right there i'll use my cans to fill the truck back up and then we'll i'll go there to fill my cans back up but uh, the michigan map the island lake is a fairly easy map to accomplish fuel wise people are like oh my gosh there's no stations or anything but really They've given us a lot of fuel resources to grab from. And the trucks, you know, are pretty easily repaired. They repair, you know, especially these scouts, you have repair kits. So 
It's really not that difficult to get through these, uh, to get through this map. There aren't that many missions on this map either. It's a little bit, uh, I don't want to say light on missions, but it's a little bit easier as far as missions go. There are just not tons and tons of missions on it. So that does help also. Oh boy. Come on. I was going off the road to kind of hopefully find a better path, and instead we found muck. <sighs> Almost there. Almost there. Mm. <laughs> the rain's not helping. Come on, Bubby. So which do I feel is more powerful, this or the... the, uh... Lodestar? And that's a difficult one. The Lodestar is so uh, fast but the um, what but uh, and it also can pull the fuel trailer so in some ways the load stars can be a more powerful truck I think this is a, maybe a better off-roader when it comes to like mountain climbing and stuff like that but anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this video as we took the Chevy through its paces the Apache uh, that was a lot of fun uh, we'll see you guys next time on SnowRunner. And uh, anyway, love you guys. Have a great night. See you next time. Bye.